I'm Steve Croft. I'm Leslie Stahl. I'm Bob Simon. And I'm Gus Schlummer. I'm Scott Pelley. Those stories and Andy Rooney tonight on 60 Minutes. The 1980s saw the first patent on a living organism. If you remember, that living organism was a bacteria designed to consume oil spills. It was named Pseudomon Oz and was the first known GMO. The, this genetically modified organism proved its value as a GMO. Nine short years later, during the Exxon Valdez oil spill disaster, 30 million gallons of oil spilled in U.S. waters. Seabirds and other marine life were saturated in oil. It was at the start of the 90s that saw the GMO put to work. And that work was cleaning up the waters in Alaska. Tonight's top story. Over a decade later, we come to you with breaking news of how GMOs have moved from the clearing waters to the shelves of your local grocery store. Tonight, we investigate the pros and cons of the scientific discovery. Is the year 1994 too early for such a breakthrough? GMOs were brought to our shelves via farming. Farmers found GMOs helped protect crops and reduce the need for pesticide application. GMOs allowed farmers to help grow crops in drier areas affected by drought and help crops previously destroyed by disease recover in full force. It has also been said that GMOs have genetically enhanced the nutritional profile of our foods. But is there another side to this story? Opposition to GMOs believe that food should not be genetically altered. Studies have proven that GMOs are causing tumors and other diseases when food containing the organisms are ingested. Although GMO foods are on the shelves, doctors are recommending that we eat a GMO-free diet this time as they believe that GMOs will cause considerable health issues, asthma, organ damage, and birth defects. We at 60 Minutes will continue to follow the story on this newfound GMO debate and will continue to keep you informed. I am Gus Schlower and this is 60 Minutes.